probably the most stupid, risky thing I've ever done, which I suppose on film they can immediately uh, give you a driving ban. You know, I got out of one side of the car and having put a brick on the accelerator, went across the bonnet and in the other, other window. Nobody's there to see it. I mean, now I mention it, people will hear about it and then it, maybe it has some sort of exchange value, but not, not at the time, you know? It's not like I was doing it to, to, to sort of use later. The world was incredibly boring, really. It's just been ground into a sort of a mush. And the things that I really appreciated sort of didn't exist. You know, there's plenty, there's plenty of kind of thorns around, but, but nobody had bothered to keep the mulberry trees. Well, I like mulberries. Between the 1980s and the mid-1990s, Johnny Dawes redefined rock climbing. He put up a clutch the world's hardest and most frightening routes, a period he has recently revisited in his memoir, Full of Myself. A route that gained almost mythical status for difficulty combined with danger was the Indian face on Snowden. To date, it has only received four ascents in a quarter of a century. You can feel sometimes that you're doing something for, for, for real reasons. It comes right out of your heart and will take you somewhere to show you, you know, who you are and what you really enjoy. And that sort of stuff has a really good um, role on, I think, for other people afterwards. And in the face, I did have a really clear, honest desire to climb that route right from the very beginning. But when other people get involved, you know, some, some of that desire does kind of wobble. If you're actually really keen to do it and you can feel that before you start off, you're not going to get jolted out by those issues when you're higher up. You're, you, you'll regret or the will to be somewhere else. Um, won't bubble up in a dangerous way. You've got to mess about. You've got to go out in bad weather or, or, or really, good, you know, really good weather when you don't think you're going to climb and you find yourself there without climbing boots or something and then you, you find yourself try something and something that didn't feel possible suddenly becomes possible. I was a fierce little bugger really and re really determined that to the point of view there was, there was no doubt in my mind that I'd do these things. I was just really shocked that I did them really kind of straight away. And it sort of, you know, I overshot the station really. I, did, I, I couldn't get off, but I also wasn't, wasn't going anywhere else. So I was very rarely out of control. I mean, I, I really enjoyed exercising the level of precision I'd built up and the physical resilience that I had in a fierce position, climbing things which hadn't been climbed, which looked beautiful. I could express how those roots kind of like um, made me feel. Dawes uses his heel to bring himself closer to the rock. It was a magic time to be, to be alive and to, and, and to do stuff. I met some fantastic people, um, you know, who steadily drew me out of my, um, you know, spiky cocoon. I ended up being really close friends with them and I, and I really enjoy their company. I think rock climbing, gave me enough time to do that. I'm sure playing music would be something like that or or any I'm sure I'm sure there's nothing special about climbing. What what's people always slag off anarchy as if it's got no structure and no love and no capacity to self-organise. But it has got capacity to self-organise. You know, we took something very, very small and made something brilliant out of it. Used hardly any resources. We had a brilliant time, you know we, 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 um, we, you know, we, we got laid and ate well and slept well. And you sort of think, what the hell is the point in working so hard just so you can have a fancy house and car? A car that you can't even drive well as well or get anywhere because everybody else has got cars. We shared cars. There's this idea of diminishing returns, you know, you sort, you sort of train and you slowly sort of grind to a halt when you get to your top standard and then everything from there is on is not going to be enjoyable or whatever. But the bottom line is, with climbing, there's the searching, the searching for a line where you can unlock something that would make you feel good. You do something really hard that felt impossible, but you kind of dream about it. You look for it, and the amazing thing is, you do bump into it, I found in the past. Then you can climb something really hard, not because you've developed a higher physical acumen, but because you somehow are able to, to connect with something. He is one move from success and safety, but the prospect of a long fall to marginal gear 
is a source of inspiration to make the mind race, and he must arrange his hands so that his right can share where his left now is. As you calm down in yourself, you can feel when you're inside or outside your body properly. So if you're going from one position to another, if you really feel cosy in each position, how to get to the next one is obvious to you, but also the second and third become sensible as well. At that point, you can start to use early moves to do later moves. And the kind of rhythmic texture of the whole climb sort of starts to calm you down because you, you know you're in sync. And at that point, your, 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 your speed of your mind in, in, increases. That's got grip there. And that happens because I'm pushing in that direction on that and that in that. And I'm just holding that, but not squeezing too much. Can you see that slipping? So if I was in that position, I would say take to my B layer there. And I would know the fall because I was already thinking about it. So I wouldn't have been as scared. So you can sort of generate like a survival mechanism. The historical context in which I grew up was of, was of reading about different climbers whose climbs uh, struck a chord in, with me and, and what I wanted to do. And the fantastic thing about climbing is that the achievements of previous generation are there in an identical state pretty much to what they were when, when the people climbed them. So you can almost go back and, and revisit the, the previous um, great Wimbledon finals on, on the Wimbledon court but they're still there. What you learn helps you to find out who you are. The rock will show you exactly in what way you're not being you. I actually like going out and standing on bits of, bits of rock and just holding that position for a while until you kind of slump into where you are and you listen to the environment. And after a while, your body will kind of slowly jig itself into another shape where you can feel um, more comfortable. I'm just looking forward to when all the hullabaloo about my books kind of starts to calm down and uh, you know I can I can enjoy um, just being just being alive again and do what climbing does well which is which is put you where you are